Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and today we have a very interesting update on a multitude of things. First of all, we're going to be talking about some airdrops and these things will be given to you for completely free. So watch it carefully. You do not want to miss it. First of all, when are these going to be? Update, airdrop, estimation, dates, in sequence and ratio. All right, one XRP to about 0.1511 Songbird is going to happen mostly at the end or somewhere within this month. Once more, none of these things have been officially confirmed, but these are most likely dates. Then we have about one XRP being equal to about one flare, which is most likely going to happen about four weeks or so after we get Songbird. Then one flare is a to be determined ratio for SFLR, which is once more the Songbird flare in October, and 172 flare for one DFLR, which can sweep up to YFLR later. Now, I'm actually a little bit confused about that because I thought that to get SFLR, it would basically be determined by the amount of Songbird you'd have, but apparently the Songbird flare is also determined by your flare, which once more I did not know. And then there's also two other airdrops which have not really been announced too much just quite yet. We still have DFLR for October, as we said. Um, and this is the Elysian and Evers, but these two are more so concepts that haven't really been worked out. And so there's no real official airdrop date. For Evers, we only got ourselves a kind of a, a white paper, a first version. And for the Elysian, I think it's a lot less difficult because it's kind of an NFT platform for real art uh, works. It's a fixed amount of Elysian, but it's also not yet out just quite yet. There's one thing which I think is also really interesting to note, which is that as it currently stands, we do not know exactly what exchanges will be supporting this. And for Songbird and Flare, as it currently stands, the date that you should have had your you know coins registered by was uh, December 12th. And for the last two, we don't actually know just quite yet. These will not rely on the same as which these will, so do not worry about it. And also, guys, these first two are decided by the 12th of December XRP. These next two are decided by your amount of flare, most likely about one week into um, it, after it launched. And then these two, no determination just quite yet, so it will most likely be decided by the amount of XP you have somewhere in the future. Then Flare Community also posted, imagine being so impatient that you can't see the positives of having a canary network, another way to earn passive income and two more airdrops. Some of the comments I read on YouTube are ludicrous. It's because people do not really like it um, on the basis that they have to wait longer, on the basis that some exchanges might not support this specific songbird. XP Rich says the reason for the comments is that people were expecting the airdrops as promised and most had invested and based their trading on this and the rug was pulled for another two months. We all know that Songbird will be good for all. It was just frustration at being led up the garden path. And that, oh, some very big thunder. It's because they told us it's going to be June plus minus two to four weeks. Yet it wasn't. All right. So people were annoyed by that logically. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you guys all two things. One. Right, put in the comment section down below if you are excited about airdrops and accompany that with the like button. Why not? And second of all, make sure you check out Bybit because right now there are some crazy bonuses. If you're a trader, that is a must check out. Once more, it's not like you must trade, but you must at least check out because there's a couple of bonuses. Then, Bitcoin and Ether hit highest level since mid-May as sentiment warms. I've been telling you guys this for a couple of days right now. Things are really starting to look up quite nicely. And whenever I say that, trust me, I look this stuff up quite quite a lot. All right? I do my research quite severely. And so if I am telling you guys that people are changing their minds, people are changing their minds. All right? It's no joke, not speculation, no nothing like that. It is a certainty. What that means for the price, that's still have to be determined. Uh, but you can already see it in the sentiment. You can see it in the articles that are being written. You can see it in almost anything right there. It's it's pretty funny to me how I can kind of notice it already. I don't know. It's just something that I've noticed over the past couple of weeks. Now, what does that mean for the near future? I would say that things are looking really good. All right. A lot of people have said, oh, it's a bull trap. Oh, it's this, oh, it's that. I think it's looking real good, mostly because of everything I've been reading. Right. One thing, for example, here. Multi-billion dollar crypto fund boss takes Bitcoin seriously. 
says its underlying tech is reshaping the world as we know. Yet, it is not only these multi-billion dollar guys that are starting to warm up towards it. He narrowed down on why he thinks crypto are an enduring investment proposition by saying, We view it as a fundamental technological transformation. It's an area of computer science called distributed consensus. So, it's the ability for a lot of people and software on the internet to be able to form trust relationships in an untrusted environment. Yeah, I guess that's not only Bitcoin, but everything in this crypto realm, right? I mean, smart contracts are the literal definition of that. He particularly disclosed that safe for the money to be made, his investment decision was mainly informed by the value that the asset created through an array of other innovations sprouting around it. Quote, money is one application of being able to have distributed consensus, but it's only one of those applications. There are many other applications, many other things that people are going to be able to do with this technology, he added. And guys, I am extremely excited about the near future. But as I've just said, it is not only the traditional financial people that are getting into it. No, there's also YouTube superstars. Uh, and this is actually just one of the many of, of big YouTubers, big celebrities, big influencers, I should say, that have really openly been adaptive towards it. And in KSI, we did an episode about him a little bit earlier where we covered his big multi-million dollar investment. The English rap singer KSI believes that people should not consider investing in Bitcoin as quick money, but as long-term investment strategy. I believe KSI is about $4 million into crypto as it currently stands. At 29 years old, that is a pretty big achievement. He invested, I think, two. It got to about eight, maybe something like that. And um, yeah, he's doing really good for himself. I really like it. But his stance towards it is also, we're investing for a longer term. If it goes bad, it goes bad. I should have sold at the top, but we're just holding through to the bitter end of things. And I, I really like him for that. Now, of course, with more of these guys coming in and telling their audiences, there's also going to be more fraud, more scams, and more annoying stuff. There's two things to say about that. One, it's obviously the more people, the more scams. And two, this is most likely what those regulators will be narrowing down onto. Because if you start to think about it, the majority of times we see a Bitcoin ETF be proposed, we already know it's going to be denied on the premise of safety and consumer protection. Yet they are protecting us from themselves. Because if, you, if there were to be ETFs, there were to be just proper rules, the unsafe part, the money laundering part would mostly be gone. It would still be there, but essentially it would be a lot less. Even though it would be more money, that's because more money could flow in. And from that same perspective, I just keep telling people that have any influence whatsoever uh, to also start thinking about just proposing stuff. The rain is crazy today. I keep waiting for a good time to record. I check my freaking app to see whenever there's going to be some rain because I know it's most likely annoying in the background noise. I check when there's going to be no rain for the next couple of minutes. I wait, I wait, I wait. I hear, okay, now it's not going to be no rain. I start recording. Everything looks fine. And then a couple minutes in, bada boom, bada bing. It's the way it goes, guys. It's the way it goes. But I wanted to say, I have told so many people of influence that they should start to tell their audience about the scams. And if they're in a position of power, just just kind of to, to look more so on the side of if regulations would come in, the majority of things that people are scared for would also go away. And by the way, I'm so sorry if this rain is annoying. I, I'm not exactly sure what I could do about it. I'm trying to keep my microphone away as much as possible. I can, I can you know what? I can grab my mic and move to the other side of this. Okay, I'm stumping over things that is not happening. Okay, never mind. I'll just sit on the floor here a little bit on a floor. There we go. Um, you would want to see how I'm sitting right now. There is the recording setup, and I just went to sit a little bit like a meter and a half away on the floor, just so hopefully you hear the rain a little bit less. I'm not even sure how hard you hear it, but yeah. Uh, and I've told them very often, go ask your followers, go ask or tell everybody scams are always going to be here but i'm also here to tell you guys exactly how to prevent them from happening to you and i've made at least i think 50 videos maybe 100 videos over the last couple of years just e explaining how you cannot fall for them or how you shouldn't fall for them one of the most prominent ones is if you sent them one they'll send you two back um another one is you have to give them access to your metamask for example Never download any extension that you don't fully 100% trust. Try to never download any wallet apps. Uh, never give anybody your private keys, obviously. Never just send people money for something in return. You know, I guess in giveaway type of sense. You know, um, 
I mean, obviously, you got to send money to get something in return, so that sounds kind of dumb. I meant, you know, you, there's a giveaway. You send them money, and, and they're promising to give you more money back. Never send money for more money in that specific sense because it's almost never going to be good. No giveaway issuer ever does it like that. It's the most dumb thing. If you're buying into a lottery, different ordeal, but that's the only way in which, you know, you paying some money with more money in return is feasible. But again, there's the element of risk. If it's a certainty because of a giveaway, think about it. Nobody's going to ever give you money because they're doing a big giveaway, yet you have to send them money first. That's the dumbest thing out there. I've told a lot of people this, yet people still do it. So I'll keep warning as time moves on. Hopefully people understand. Once more, guys, make sure you check out Bybit. I'm going to sit back in my chair. And this one. There we go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new. And um, I, I hope that more will be clearer about the infrastructure bill later today.